Good afternoon, everybody. So, I come with another blessed download from the Lord. <laughs> it amazes me. Um, mm, the level of encouragement that comes from God. Like, it's, I, I can't even express it. I can't really... <sighs> Well, I guess I can. I guess I can express it. Okay, God. All right. So it's just like, um, I don't know, like there you have your groups of people. So they're like, you have these groups of people and there's one group of people, uh, anytime something is going on and it's going bad for them and it's just, uh, not even that maybe it's going bad. Maybe it's just a bad day. Um, all of a sudden their mindset changes, their attitude changes, they become overwhelmed, they become depressed, uh, they become sad and angry and, you know, they can't be reached. God can't reach them. He can't pull them out of there because they're not, they, their trust and their faith was placed in another individual to pull them out. So he can't pull them out. He can't pull them out. And these are the same people that if God removed uh, all of the things around them that they depend so strongly on, they would totally be lost. And then you have the other group of people who, as soon as they hit a bump in the road or they have an off day or they have a frustrating day or whatever day it is for them, um, they immediately pull on the Lord. They immediately pull on their divine source, which is God, our heavenly father. They pull on him. Uh, this can look like they're worshiping, they're reading scriptures, they're confessing scriptures over themselves. Uh, they're delighting themselves in the Lord. They're spending time playing the scriptures in the car while they're moving about. Uh, they're, they waste no time. It's almost like, um, when your attitude is like that, it's almost like the Holy spirit rushes in and immediately before the enemy can sell you this lie, God has already put a word down in your spirit for you. You didn't have to go and get someone to pray about it. You didn't have to go and do this. He automatically just puts a word in your spirit to help you overcome that moment, that day, uh, that week of whatever was going on that might have been rocky or rough. He will get you through that because you have a divine connection to God himself. That is your source. And for a lot of us, that is our only source. Okay. A lot of us who God took all these people from around us, it was for a purpose. It really was. It was for a reason. It needed, I, I say this over and over again, it doesn't matter where I'm at, whether it's on Facebook or if I'm talking amongst people that I know or family, whatever, I'm always mentioning it. I'm always mentioning that this is something that God does. He will put you by yourself in order to sharpen you spiritually. And he's sharpening you in your mind. He's sharpening the way that you think. He's preparing you for obstacles and things that are coming. He's preparing you for uh, things that others are, wouldn't even be able to make it through because they are relying too much on others to bring them through uh, versus relying on God to bring them through. And those are their, th those are those two types of people. Um, but for us who look to God for everything, I mean, everything you look to God for your food to eat. You look to God for the roof over your head. You look to God for the car you drive. And this is what I mean by that is you're thanking God. You're looking to him to keep things together around you. You're looking to, for, uh, uh, to him to take care of your children. You're looking to him to uh, 
do what he said he was going to do. He's going to do it. Make no mistake about it. He's going to do what he said he was going to do, but you just have to exercise your patience and your trust and your faith in God to come through, to come through what he said he was going to do. It doesn't matter what the devil, what picture he paints. It, I could care less. I could care less. You have to have that, that attitude like, listen, you know, this ain't my first, what's the, what's the thing that, oh, this is the thing my mom used to always say, and it, it, I don't know why it's funny to me, but it's, it's the truth, you know, for this time. This isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> Woo, I don't know what made me think about that, but, <laughs> but this isn't my first rodeo. Like, really, it's not. I've been in this thing with God for a hot minute, and the longer you're in it with him, the more there's nobody else to fall back on, the more you learn to trust he is the one to fall back on. And when you fall back on him, he's going to catch you. That's a word. He's going to catch you. So God is not like these people out here, uh, fumbling, dropping you, uh, walking over top of you, um, uh, spitting on you after you love on them. He's not like that. He's not any of those things. You know, he's not an Indian giver. He doesn't tell you or give you gifts and then take them back. <laughs> he doesn't do that. He doesn't say, I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to bless you with this. I want to do this through your life. And then all of a sudden he's going to change his mind. That's not God. No, that's not him. He's going to follow through with what he says that he's going to do, but it's up to us to hold up our end. It's up to us to hold up our end. Okay. So it's a lot of people out here. They don't want you to, to know how powerful you are. They don't want you to believe in yourself. They, they want to strip you of who you are out of jealousy and envy. They don't, they can't stand it. They don't like it. It gets under their skin. Like, how does this person bounce back like this? You know, I got that, I got that Jesus bounce back. I got that Jesus juice bounce back power. That's what it is. Let's call it that. <laughs> Jesus juice bounce back power. That's what I got. I can't even deny it. That's what I have. That's what I have. I have um, such a connection to my God that it's nothing he won't bring me through. It's nothing that he won't do for me. It's nothing. And the love is so real. It's so real. It's not fake. That's how, that's how strong and powerful this love is. This is that type of love that when he gives you something from him and it's genuine and it's really from him, it's a whole nother ball game. It's a whole nother thing. It's a whole nother thing. Everything ain't from God. Everything is not every gift that you receive or every person that comes into your life. They're not from God. Everybody can't be. But the ones who are from God, the ones that God places in your life and they are truly from God, you're going to know that. You're going to know that because you know them by their spirit. You know them by the fruits. You know them by what they display. You know them by knowing, you know, who it is that God says that they are, not who you want to believe that they are based upon your small mind and what you think you know, but you haven't even gone to God to find out, is that person who they truly say they are? And most people know you are. Most people know you are who you say you are, but the way that this world is, these people will try to discredit you to make themselves look bigger than you, to make themselves look more smarter than you, more educated than you. This is the type of world we live in. It's real, um, I don't know, it's real flaky. That's the only way I can describe it. It's a flaky like world. It's so strange to me. Very weird, you know, because I don't base my life off of uh, making myself look better than somebody else. I'm just going to be who God called me to be, who he intended me to be. And if that is offensive to some people, it will just be offensive. But I'm not going to change uh, what he's told me to do or who he's called me to be. I have the voice I have for the reason, the, uh, for the, um, whatever reason God gave it to me. 
I have the look that he chose for me because that's the look that he wanted me to have. I have the gifts and the talents and the anointing that I have because that's what he desired. That's what he wanted to do with my life. Just like you have what you have because that's what he chose for you to have. So I just have that this small world, this uh, small word to drop off with you guys really quick. Don't uh draw close to the Lord. I always, I always say this, draw, spend your time drawing close to the Lord because it's going to be a lot of opportunities uh, for the enemy to slide in with doubt. Uh, it's going to be a lot of opportunities for him to feed you lies. It's going to be a lot of opportunities for that. And it's going to be up to you. You can't go always looking for somebody else. You have to, you know, it's going to be up to you to get to God, you know, and I'm not scared to say I run to God. I run. I don't walk. I don't skip. I run. And the moment I speak his name, he's already there. He's already there. So it's nothing that we would ever go through in this life that he does not know. And there are things that he has in store for those of us that are chosen. All we have to do is just continue to trust in him and, and wait to wait until those uh, visions and dreams and prophecies over our lives come to pass because they shall come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus at the appropriate time they shall come to pass and it won't, they won't be delayed they will not be delayed okay put your faith and trust in God not man you know man gonna fail you they gonna trash talk you um they gonna try to keep you down it's just something about it they gonna try to keep you down but God's gonna lift you God's going to lift you, lift you. When they try to drag you down, God will lift you higher. Woo! God will lift you higher. You better believe it. So anyway, I have to go. That's what I had to say. I have to get myself together to get out here. Go have some good time today. I'm just excited because, you know, there was a time, you know, God wouldn't allow me to just have a little bit of fun. I just had to be by myself. And so the little time that I have, you know, I just always see the Lord saying, appreciate it, appreciate what I'm doing and sow what you need to sow where you need to sow and be a blessing where I want for you to be a blessing. And, um, because it'll come a time, the time that I'm sharing with certain people, I may not be able to share any longer, you know, because God may have moved me on to another area, another place, uh, uh something else that he is doing. And I may not get that time. So I, I take God at his word and say, appreciate the time, have fun. I take it. I'm like, okay, God, this little bit of fun, I'm going to take it in. <laughs> so, you know, y'all have a wonderful Sabbath today. Go have a little fun. Go have a little fun. Even if you're having fun by yourself, go have a little fun. Go laugh. You know, go talk to God. Go sing a song. Go do something. Uh, go have dinner with somebody or with yourself. Go do karaoke night with somebody. Do something. And uh, whatever brings you joy, whatever makes your, uh, makes your heart merry, make sure you include God in that. Make sure you include God because we are definitely in dangerous times now. So make sure everything you do, you include God before you go and do those things. Okay. So y'all all have a blessed day. All right. All right. Bye now.